And now you should fully understand how to use catalogs. So hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Gotcha. My name is Will. Welcome to the channel. Today we are going to dive into one of my lessons from my Lightroom Master of Editing course. If you're looking for a course to truly master how to edit in Lightroom, go check it out. This is one of those lessons and I thought it's so good that I might as well just give it out to you as an example to potentially talk you into purchasing my whole course, which is phenomenal altogether. Now buckle up for this one because I tried to keep it as short as possible of a video, but even though catalogs are relatively simple as a whole, there is a lot of data to unpack to fully understand them. So by the end of this video, and if you make it to the end, I, I applaud you, but by the end of this video, you will fully understand how and why to use catalogs. So let's get into it. In this video, we are going to cover what a catalog is, not what cats are, what a catalog is in Lightroom. Now there's gonna be two parts to this video because essentially there is a simple explanation and then all of the extras, which they are kind of useful, but to be honest, I spent years uh, editing in Lightroom without truly understanding catalogs and didn't really use them or anything. So. It is an optional thing, even though without even knowing about it, you are actually using a catalog. So essentially, what is the catalog? Well, a catalog is, to analogize it with cooking, it's your cookbook. So the catalog, like the cookbook, contains the ingredients, the uh, special ways to do something, the cooking instructions, your little penned in notes to make it better, all of those things it contains in this cookbook. That is your catalog. It does not contain your JPEGs, your RAWs, your TIFFs, the true files. The catalog is essentially a database that knows where your files are. Any edits, any stars, any flags, any notes, any keywords, all of that, it creates the, the blueprint for that. So when you open that photo in Lightroom, it says, good, here's our file. Good, here's the adjustments. Let's layer them on top. And that is essentially what a catalog is. That's all it is. Let's say you're importing photos into Lightroom for the first time ever. You're not gonna necessarily create a catalog. You're gonna open Lightroom, and maybe it's different now. It's been a long time since I've opened Lightroom for the first time, but it opens up and it will pre-make a catalog. Now, it might ask you a name. It might ask you something like this. I'm not sure. Like I said, it's been a while but it's going to automatically generate a catalog. And if you've been working in Lightroom for a while and really haven't messed with catalogs, you've been working in the same catalog the whole time without even knowing it. And that's, there's no wrong, nothing wrong with that. That's just how it is. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start fresh. So in Lightroom, we're gonna go up to new and new catalog. I'm gonna put this in this video's folder because that's, you know, keep it organized. And I'm going to call this catalog cat, to log video example, and we're gonna press create. Now Lightroom is going to close your current catalog and it's going to shut down and then it's going to reopen a new catalog, this new catalog. So this is where catalogs become kind of confusing because every catalog that you do is a separate cookbook. So for example, if you have three cookbooks, you have recipes for this in here, this in here, and this in here. Let's say you make notes. You make, you know, I, oh, you need to bake this for 350 in cookbook A. Well, that note is not gonna be in cookbook B or C because it's only in A. So same thing with a catalog. When you make adjustments, when you make uh, specific customizations, things like that on photos, that isn't going to transfer to the other catalogs. Same with special crops or anything like that. Those are going to be in the specific catalogs. So this catalog, as you see, has no photos. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and import my photos for, for this video into this catalog. Now I have files and then files and then files. So I think it's this one. Nope, it's this one. Good. So we're gonna import this. Now you'll notice there's nothing over here. There's no edits. I do have my presets. So your presets will transfer because those aren't catalog specific. Now, when you create a new catalog, it's going to create a folder that looks like this. Catalog video example is what we named it. And then you double click this, and this here is your catalog. So it says catalog video example LRCAT, Lightroom catalog. This file here 
whole is your cookbook. This holds all the data, but it's not that big. If you right click on it and press get info, you'll notice that it's only two megabytes on the disc. Now this only has 18 photos in it, so it gets bigger as you add more photos, but it's essentially not gonna be that big. Once you've created this catalog and you've imported the photos, which are in this folder here, Lightroom has determined where these things are. It, it, is, it is chained to that area. If you were to move a file, so let's say, let's take this file here and we're just gonna move it into this out of that folder that Lightroom knows where it is. If I click over here, notice how a little exclamation point appears on this photo here. If I click it, it says, could not be used because the original file could not be found. Would you like to locate it? Now you can locate it easily by clicking because you know where it is. However, you can also just drag and drop it back into that original folder and it should repopulate. Let's go into develop and then back here and it should repopulate and boom, now it's found again. Now, the important thing to note is if you ever have to move or rename or anything like that, do it in Lightroom because then Lightroom will automatically update that photo or file and it will still be connected. So here's what I mean by that. Let's say you wanna make some adjustments to these file names or file locations. First, let's right click on this and let's go down to show parent folder. So we see this is where Lightroom catalogs is. So if we click here um, and we go into here, the parent folder is Lightroom catalogs, which is this folder right here. Now let's say we wanna move this file into that folder. So if we click it and drag it over, it will then moving in file list. This will cause the corresponding file on desk, disk to be moved. If you proceed, neither this move nor any change you've made prior to this can be undone. Fine, it's just saying if you move it, it's moved. So we can move it and good. Now it's still in this area, but there it is right there. Now let's say we wanna move it back. Well, we just drag it back into this one and move and boom, now it's back into video examples. So you can move the files in Lightroom. Now, if you want to, let's say, rename something. So let's say we wanted to rename this folder. So we go here, we click rename, and we type in, let's say, test, right? And look, it's now renamed test. But if we rename it here and go back to Lightroom, look, now all these exclamation points appear. Now we can simply right click on this, find missing folder, and click on this. Nope, not that one, this one, and press choose, and boom, now it's all found. So summary of all of this is if you need to rename or move something, do it in Lightroom because it'll save you that step of locating the missing folder, but you can still locate the missing file or, or folder if you don't. Now, the biggest question that is asked all the time is should you use one catalog or multiple catalogs, whether that's per year, per shoot, whatever you want. And this is completely personal opinion. So the one catalog is called a master catalog and then the single catalogs would be single catalogs. So some photographers use a catalog per year. So they have clients of 2025, 2024, so on and so forth. Some photographers use a new catalog for every client. And some photographers like me uh, use one catalog because I just started using catalogs a little bit more in depth but I had one master catalog that pretty much had everything in it. Now there's pluses and minuses here. One catalog makes it very, very easy to plug in whatever hard drive you're using to, to edit, find your photos and edit them. Your catalog's already open, you just find the right client, the right folder and boom, there you go. Now, the downside of that is when you get hundreds of thousands of photos in this catalog, it can slow things down Lightroom has got progressively better at this, being speeded up and not having so much clutter, but it is bound to happen when you put so many photos in one cookbook. Now, the other way you could do this is create a catalog for a specific shoot or a specific year and have all that year shoots in there and organize it that way. I have one photographer I know, he creates a catalog for every single client. So all of his client work for that, for client A, is all in catalog A. For client B is in catalog B. So he just opens those catalogs and all of their shoots, let's say you do a family shoot every single year for the same family, every single year is there. Now that might work and that might be work, what's workable for you. So 
you just kind of have to decide. The smaller the catalogs are, the kind of faster they will run, but is it fast enough to make a difference to have several catalogs? Again, that's totally up to you. I've used one master catalog for almost 10 years now and just recently started diving into other catalogs. And again, totally up to you. Now, there are some settings that you can mess around with with the catalogs. If you go to Lightroom, you go to catalog settings, you can play with a little bit of settings here. So general gives you just the information of the catalog, uh, previews, shows how it shows the photos. Now I have it as auto, but you can change this to be a little bit faster by showing smaller previews if you want. Next is metadata and just take a look at all of this. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you have any specific questions, you can let me know and I can go into more depth, uh, but you can select your selections here and then backups. This is probably the most important one. Remember, what you're backing up is this full, this, not this. You're backing up this here. You're creating a duplicate one of these because it has happened where Lightroom catalogs, the LR cat files have corrupted. And what, that, what happens is you lose your recipes. Now you're not losing your raw files or JPEGs or anything like that because they are completely separate. So by backing this up, you're creating a duplicate one of these in case one of them messes up. So you can choose to back up once a week when exiting Lightroom, you can choose whatever selection you want here, and it just creates a duplicate. Now remember, you should always back up all of your raw files and JPEGs just in case something like that happens. It's the same concept. Your Lightroom catalog is all of your recipes and things. So if you were to lose your Lightroom catalog, you would still have your raw files, but they would be raw once again. You wouldn't have the data to say what your edits were, what your stars were, what your ratings were, so on and so forth. Now, the next thing is pretty cool because this is why catalogs are actually really, really nice. And that's if you use an editor or if you need to send your photos to someone else to edit. Now, how you do this is by exporting a catalog. So you can do this in two ways. One, let's say you have these here, uh, you can select them all or you can star, let's say you just star these, right? And we want to do, I'm going to keep it very small. So let's keep, cause it can take some time. So we're going to do four. We're going to go up to file. We're going to go to export as catalog and we're going to export it here. We're going to say, uh, editor files one. Okay, good. And we're gonna make sure that these are selected. Export negative files, build include smart previews and include available previews. So what these make sure is that you they get the raws in this folder, they get the smart previews, then they get all the data that you've already included. So if you don't put export negative files, they won't get the raws. So make sure that all three of those are done and then press export catalog. Now, depending on how many RAWs you are exporting, this can take a long time or a short time. I'm not sure, that's why I only did four because I wanna make sure that it doesn't take too long. Uh, so this is almost done. So we're gonna go into our folder here and here's our editor files. And you'll notice it has all of this here. Now, all we're going to do is right click on it. We're going to press compress because that'll create a zip file. So you can actually like send it to them and not overload their system. And once this is done, you simply send this to your editor. Once they get it, they will do what I'm about to show you. They're going to import it into their Lightroom, do all their edits and send you the same thing back. What you're going to do when you get it back, you're gonna go to file and you're gonna go to import blah, 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 from another catalog. Then you're gonna find that one, which is this here, and you're gonna press choose. This is going to bring all that data back in and merge it with your current data. So it says there's nothing to import because I didn't make any changes. But if I were to make some changes or the editor made some changes, sent that back to me, it would merge all that data into this catalog. Now, if you happen to have edits on these photos, it will more than likely overwrite that. So just be aware of that. If you have edits, make sure you export those edits or save them in another place before you import that catalog because you will it will overwrite on file to file. So it'll so just be aware of that. Now, if your catalog starts to run a little bit slower than it used to, or you start noticing a little bit of delay, you can optimize it. Now, to keep this super simple, basically what it does is it 
cleans up the back end of the mechanics of your catalog. It has things that it uses to fetch data quicker. It has, uh, sometimes it has standing deleted files. So if you delete a raw out of Lightroom, there's kind of a artifact in the background that's like there, but doesn't exist, but still taking up space kind of deal. Anyways, keep it super simple optimization goes through and cleans up the back end to get rid of any excess fluff that is slowing things down that doesn't need to be. So all you do here is you go to file, you go to optimize catalog, and it gives you a little prompt that says if your catalog is large and has been running slowly, optimizing may help per, uh, performance. It's going to take a little bit and it will restart when done. Now this is, I just created this catalog, so there's nothing to do. So it done and it will restart Lightroom and you'll be good to go. I do this occasionally and I'll be honest, I don't really see that much improvement, but I do see a little bit faster movement occasionally. I, I think you do it every six months or so and that's probably good enough. And there you have it. That covers pretty much everything you need to know about catalogs. There, there, there's a lot of data, but they're not complex. The easiest way to think about them is do you need one? or do you want multiple? That's really all there is to it. And once you figure out what works best for your workflow, do that and carry on editing and give it no more thought. Just move on from catalogs. Anyways, that's it for this lesson. I'll see you in the next video. So there you have it. There's the catalogs wrapped up nicely in a nice little present, all for you to fully understand and use in Lightroom. So with that, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you go check out my Lightroom Master of Editing course. I will link it in the description. With that, here's two videos that I think you might enjoy, so go check those out, and I'll see you in the next video.